So there's not only things that we have to stop uh, but to achieve climate justice, there's things that we have to do. We have to transform the economy. We need urgent decarbonisation of the, the economy. We need society to act together in a great national effort to transform our economy. And part of what that that means, the, the, the good part of that is that if we really get cracking on that, there'll be plenty for everyone to do, and that will be climate jobs. So here to speak about that um, is and the campaign that we've been doing and the trade union group and the campaign against climate change have been doing for climate jobs is Suzanne Jeffrey. Thank you. About just over a year ago, the Campaign Against Climate Change Trade Union Group republished um, a report that we'd written. Uh, the report that we'd written identified how we could create a million climate jobs in this country, um, which would act really as climate jobs, in other words, jobs that would genuinely reduce emissions. We identified that we could reduce emissions up to 80% by creating a million climate jobs. But we republished our report just over a year ago, for one very simple reason, we renamed it. We renamed it Solving the Environmental and the Economic Crisis. And we did that because of the absolutely brutal economic crisis um, that, had broke, that had broken out. And I think uh, a number of people have already said that they see that environmental and economic crisis as being two sides of the same coin, and I think that's absolutely right. If you look at the economic crisis, it's absolutely clear that it's been a result of the banker's greed and an absolutely unsustainable system that's built on the pursuit of profit for a minority, regardless of the implication for the rest of us and for the planet. And on top of that, thank you very much, on top of that, they have an unsustainable economic system that is also causing environmental uh, disaster. And what's their answer, what's their solution to this unsustainable system? It's absolutely more of the same. Their solution is that the rest of us should bail out their unsustainable system to the tune of trillions and trillions of pounds. We should bail it out, they tell us, through our pensions, through our welfare system, through austerity. And I think we saw earlier on this week when an historic event happened, when millions of public sector workers took to the streets in United Strike Action. It was a fantastic moment because that was a challenge not just to them saying we've got to bail out their unsustainable system with our pensions. It was also a challenge to the way that they're running the system. It was a challenge that says we will not stand by and tolerate a system that is lining the pockets of bankers whilst it ignores ordinary people, while it ignores our pensioners. And I think we should take heart from what happened earlier on this week, because we're trying to argue that there is an alternative to that un unsustainable system, and there's an alternative in terms of the kind of jobs that we could create. When people are talking about false solutions, watch out for them, because my God, they're going to be happening with knobs on. We're going to be hearing our politicians tell us over and over again that it's a choice between the environment and jobs. That's an absolute blatant lie. It's not a choice between the environment and jobs. The two are not mutually exclusive. But the trouble is that the kind of jobs, the tiny number of jobs that they talk about, are jobs that actually make the situation worse for the environment. If you saw the Orton statement a couple of days ago, what kind of jobs are they talking about? They're talking about jobs in Ray, uh, they're talking about jobs in more roads, more Boris Islands, etc., etc. We have to take out the message loud and clear that is not a sustainable future for our, for our planet and it's not a sustainable future for our young people. It's full of hypocrisy and it's full of lies because they're happy to stand by and see 1 million, 1.3 million young people rot on the dole when those people could be working in the kind of industries which are helping our planet survive and actually giving those people meaningful jobs to do. On, on this. I really do think that we have seen some significant events take place globally as people have stood up to the system, have stood up to the people that are wrecking our lives and wrecking our planet. We have to take hope from that. We have to take hope from the strikes, from the demonstrations, from the protests, and particularly actually from the strikes that took place. It is a historic moment. But David Cameron said it was a damn squid. Again, what lies, what horrible lies and propaganda.
propaganda. I hope he rues the day that he said it was a damp squid. I hope he tosses and turns in his bed when he realizes what he has unleashed, because what he has released is beginning to the solution to the problem, which is ordinary people and the kind of alternatives that we can pose. Let's join that movement. Let's stand as part of that movement. Let's challenge the hypocrisy and the inaction. Let's challenge the idea that the market has any solutions to these problems. The market has not got solutions to these problems. But let's challenge also the false choice that there is, it is between jobs and a sustainable future. Our future lies in creating sustainable jobs that can reduce emissions. It's, it, our future lies in challenging the global economic order that puts profit before people and the planet. Yeah.